So the title of this talk is Data Games. And if, Elizabeth, if you could turn that to me, towards me, uh, we're ready to go. So Data Games is a set of six math games and activities for grades seven through 12. It was released in October. It runs in a browser. It requires no installation and it's free. free. Yeah, so get out there. It's what I've been working on for three years. It's the work of a team, including Tim Erickson, Kirk Swenson, Rick Gaston, and a bunch of other people. And the Ni National Science Foundation provided funding. And BJ Lederman composed our theme music. No, sorry. That's the wrong. OK. So the games. In a data games activity, students play a game that generates data. They use the data to build a model that gives them insights with which they can improve their strategy for playing the game and get more points. There are activities that go with each of the games and a resource center that supports classroom use with movies for students, movies for teachers, teacher guide materials, and so on. Now, when you play a game in a data games activity, the activity starts with the student playing and getting familiar with the rules. And then their first strategy usually involves guess and check. And often they succeed with this strategy on the first game level, but not on succeeding levels. At some point, which usually requires prodding, they start looking at the data. They often zero in on data displayed in a table, which takes the place of what they might have otherwise been writing. They begin to look for patterns. Surprisingly, students resist using graphs, perhaps not having had many experiences in which graphs are useful. But word gets around the class that graphs are essential to figuring things out here, and uh, so they start using them. Um, they still have to figure out how to use that model, the equation, to improve their score on the game. And to do that, they might solve the equation and use the result as a formula. Some games, but not all, allow you to turn your strategy into a, an automation that plays the game quickly and accurately. At this stage, it is the model and strategy that are of more interest than the game moves. Let's look more closely at one game, Shuffleboard. You push the discs, trying to get them to land close to the right edge of each pad. Guess and check works fine on the first level, but it doesn't work after that. <clears throat> so, um, you have to, the students make careful study of successive moves using the table. Most use the equation of a line in the graph, and some develop clever strategies, like pushing one to get the distance to push ratio. You've got a bunch of tools to work with. Uh, the games change, but the tools stay the same. Here you see some of the things that you can do with the graph. Hmm, why does that look like Fathom? <laughs> a succession of levels keeps the games interesting and challenging. Getting to the next level requires scoring above a certain threshold. The teacher guidelines tell you a, uh, what a good level to set to be sure students have to engage in the mathematics. Once they become proficient, some students will want to automate their gameplay. Here, for an early level in shuffleboard, that involves writing a formula with one variable. But for higher levels, you'll need parameters and intermediate variables. So let's look a little bit at each of the other games. Cartwig, it's a gussied up in-out machine. Given a number of bricks, compute the weight. But it can be challenging when there are two sizes of bricks. At the heart of proximity is a proportional relationship between how far you pull back on the ball and how far it goes. You have to measure distance and then do a computation. <clears throat> And in Floyd's at Fargo, you have to figure out the optimum price for some tire insurance. Hmm. Zero is not a good price. This model involves a quadratic equation. Randomness of the occurrence of flats complicates things. To win at Markov, you have to save Madeline the dog by meeting Dr. Markov at beating Dr. Markov at rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> 
There are patterns to discover using a two-way table. Did I mention that Markov wins all ties? <laughs> Lunar lander isn't really a game at all until you come up with a formula for giving the la a landing a score. The formula usually involves some combination of time to land, impact, and remaining fuel. Our slogan, victory through data analysis. What's important here is not really the game or the data, but the mathematics. As one student said after doing very well on a game, I like math, it helps me win. 